So welcome to the next Mode Lab course on computing form. We're going to be looking at advanced simulation techniques with Kangaroo. In applications ranging from structural engineering to playful form making, this course will cover advanced techniques for modeling constraints and forces with grids, nets, and inflatables. In addition, participants, you, will learn creative ways to capture and compile images and animations from your simulated models. So I'm Gil Akos, and here with me is Ronnie Parsons. We are the founders of Mode Lab. And Mode Lab is a collective learning platform. And really, our vision is to empower creatives through education and experiences in design technology. I hope you've all had a chance to uh, take a look at our new website that we launched formally yesterday. Uh, this is a screen grab from it. Um, it's, uh, the URL is lab.modecollective.nu. And we're, we'd really like to hear uh, your thoughts about it. We hope that it is an even better and more robust uh, platform for you to uh, learn about design technology. So a little bit more about the about Mode Lab. Um, we really think that uh, when learning becomes a social process, that collective insight and understanding leads to intellectual synergy, and unique perspective, skills, and experiences yield innovation not only for the group of people that have come together to investigate a certain topic, but for you, the individual, as well. So here under uh, the collective tab, um, labeled Inspired Dialogue, this is all the people, events, and work that really make up the lab that have come about over uh, the last four years of our uh, lab's development. And um, on the next part of the uh, navigation, you'll see the Learning tab. And this um, allows you to browse the course catalog and our goal here is really to connect you to learning content. And um, we've made course, courses that range in topic um, and format, and we really want to be able to make this a flexible experience for you um, because we understand the constraints of time and all the various interests of our diverse community. So here you can browse all of the uh, courses by, um, by type, format, software, or topic. And on the last page is um, the platform, which is all the different ways that you can learn with us, which includes courses such as this online, uh, workshops, etc. And uh, coming out of all of the uh, kind of learning experiences that we've curated over the years, if you go to the collective tab, you can see some of the work that's been produced not only by us, but by our participants um, with all the new skills that they've learned uh, in the context of Mode Lab. And of course, um, uh, alongside our uh, new website, um, we're active on Facebook. We hope that if you haven't already, you will connect with us and your fellow mode lovers over here at facebook.com backslash mode collective. Okay, so let's talk about uh, what we'll be covering today. Um, we're going to look at how we might discover equilibrium shapes with physics-based simulation. And this, again, is going to be building upon the content that we um, uh, produced for the Introduction to Simulation with Kangaroo course uh, a few weeks back. And we want to focus on uh, all the different ways um, you can develop equilibrium shapes and how you might approach uh, simulation in the production of those shapes. Um, so we're also going to be looking at how uh, we can develop structures with uh, particular kind of categorical types in mind, uh, grids and grid shells, nets or membranes and inflatables. Uh, we're going to also uh, kind of reserve the last third or so of the course for advanced techniques um, in working with constraints and forces, which include capturing our simulations uh, and compiling them into video and keyframing the behavior of our simulation as it solves. Uh, so we'll be able to really kind of uh, calibrate and develop some really interesting simulations and um, represent them in the context of video. All right, so a couple of quick notes about um, course administration before we get started. Um, the course is going to last two and a half hours. We'll have Q&A sessions after each exercise. Um, and we have uh, presentations that go along with exercises, and we kind of bounce back and forth between them. Uh, this particular course uh, has a little bit uh, extra course content in the form of um, kind of fundamental concepts. Uh, through a presentation at the beginning part of the course, but that will set the groundwork for the rest of the course for us to really iterate through a number of different sketch ideas uh, using our simulation environment. Um, 
you should have seen uh, an email come through uh, recently with a link to the source files. If you don't have that link, um, just shoot us a line in the question window and we'll um, send it to you again so you can download the instructor files. Um, in addition to uh, the files that we provide you with, we're going to be using Kangaroo 8, 80, uh, sorry, 85, right? So we'll, we'll bounce to the download location for that shortly uh, to make sure that you have that current version. I think it was released just a week or so ago. Uh, we're going to be recording this course and um, um, splitting it up into smaller uh, videos and posting it to our site um, next week and you'll have access to that collection of videos in perpetuity um, but specifically you'll be uh, able to access that through uh, our new tiny pass user system which we hope you all have um, got up and running uh, at this point already um, so Ronnie and I will both be conducting the course simultaneously um, I'll be uh, running the uh, presentation and Ronnie will be answering questions on the fly. So if you have any questions at all, go ahead and drop them into the question window through the GoTo interface, and we'll address them as a group. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, dive in um, so we can have a kind of fun and um, interactive learning experience uh, for this Friday on the topic of computing form. Okay, so we're going to be using Grasshopper. Um, uh, hopefully you're all familiar with uh, this application at this point. It is a node-based algorithm editor that allows us to use most of Rhino 3D's modeling tools. All right, we connect nodes to define uh, logical relationships, and that then defines a parametric model, wherein the parts of that model relate and change in a coordinated way, as defined by all the inputs that we specify. And again, that is by us. Okay, so again, the idea behind parametrics is that there may be a particular instance that is the result of that parametric model, but this shape is as much a part of the parametric model as its friend next door. Even though they look very different, they are bound by the same relationships, but they just have different values that are their inputs. So if we understand the basic logic of uh, a parametric model, right, Things move in a coordinated fashion. Let's talk a little bit about how that model is being solved. Right? Um, when we're working with Grasshopper, the solution is done all at once. So what we see is always the current state. If it, it, and it might um, kind of pause for a second and give you the uh, beach ball or um, hourglass icon on your screen while it thinks, but it can only really ever show one state. Right? Uh, in contrast, we might think about how we would process a set of relationships incrementally or recursively, right? Um, that's going to be fa uh, falling within the paradigm uh, mostly of uh, scripting, right? We're writing code to incrementally step through a series of actions. Uh, and re recursion would also fall within that umbrella, right? And uh, those two things are not necessarily things that you can do, or at least very easily, inside of Grasshopper uh, without using some extensions. And the most interesting for our case today is that uh, we can also solve relationships over time, right? Uh, and that's the kind of key factor uh, with simulation, which is, again, the uh, content for today's course. But really, the thing that we want to point out here is that defining how the solution is processed determines how and to what degree you have control over that solution. All right? So if we're looking at simulation, which we'll define here from... Um, our friend Lars Spoybrick. Simulation means to inform a virtual system which during the processing of that information takes on an actual structure that has a registering of its inputs, right? And this has to happen over time, right? So what are the characteristics of any simulation that we set up? Well, firstly, because it's based in time, it will be dynamic, right? Again, this is in contrast to a parametric model which may move and change, but all we're doing when we're seeing those changes is really seeing different states, right? So it's always the current state. Simulation, though, has a um, is bound to time, not only based, but is bound to time. Uh, so it is very dynamic, right? Um, it is efficient, right? We can set it up so that it will distribute forces throughout the system uh, and move and move the system towards equilibrium, right? So structurally, materially, it, it can be understood to be very efficient. Um, 
I'd also characterize it as intuitive, right? Uh, when we start to add more pressures or a higher degree of force, right, um, form, the resulting shapes that we see, and those pressures are directly related, right? It's kind of A equals A. If I do this, then that. I can really understand what's going to happen so I can work with it in a very intuitive manner. Simulation can also be described as intelligent, right, because it moves beyond a kind of simple expression, right, because it has to evaluate at each frame or moment in time the current situation, and then the next moment in time will remember what that previous situation was and build from there, right. So we can say that form is found through that processing, or you can also say that it is calculated, and um, it, that would actually allow you to develop much more complex shapes. Uh, a catenary curve, uh, ex for example, is a very easy analogy here. Uh, we can have one catenary curve and calculate it mathematically, but if we wanted to stack catenary curves, uh, we really have to use simulation to be able to do that uh, because everything is changing relative to uh, the, all the other elements that are connected to the parts of the catenary curve. <clears throat> 